Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we shall talk about a classic static analysis. It's called range analysis, and it tries to estimate the interval of values covered by the integer variables in a program. I will start the class with an example. Can you guys stop the video and try to answer the questions on the right? Notice that all the variables are integers, although we are talking about a dynamically typed programming language. And what is this information good for? I mean, if we have an estimate of the lowest and highest values that any variable can assume, what can we do? I will show a few uses for this information in the next slides. First, range analysis helps in that code elimination. For instance, consider this program. We know that inside the branch, v will be less than 100. Because it's unsigned, it must be also greater than or equal 0. But then we are doing an AND with 255, which is FF in hexadecimal. But this operation cannot change a variable that's between 0 and 100. So this code essentially does nothing, and we could eliminate it. Another important optimization that range analysis enables is the elimination of array bounds checks. You know, type safe languages guard accesses to arrays. If we try to access them outside bounds, then an exception ensues. There must be a check to trigger the exception. Of course, like an if-then else inside the code. But sometimes, if we know the ranges of the variables, we can eliminate these checks. You can verify that such optimization is possible in this program on the, on the left. We can also use range analysis to eliminate code that guards against integer overflows. You see, in many programming languages, an overflow will trigger an exception. And like in the case of array bound checks, there must be conditionals inside the code to throw the exception. But if we know the range of variables, we might be able to eliminate some of these guards. You can again verify that such is the case for the program on the left. You can stop the video and check this program if you want. Range analysis also helps us to find security vulnerabilities due to integer overflows. For instance, this program has a security vulnerability. It might read memory out of bounds, yet it looks safe. I suggest you to stop the video and read the program. Can you see how it would be possible to read an allocated memory? Be aware, uh, this bug is tricky to find. It seems that the program is safe due to the test at line 3, right here. However, if w times h is a big value, then it will not fit into a char then both sides might end up a very small number, even though w and h are not small. And then we pass the check at line 3. But the loops at line 6 and 7 will read w times h positions of data anyways, of array data, right here. And some of these readings can be invalid. The elimination of integer overflows is particularly important in the context of just-in-time compilation. For instance, JavaScript represents numbers using the IEEE 754 floating-point standard. But when generating binary code, some, sometimes the JIT converts numbers to integers. But the overflow guards are always there because doubles are larger than integers and the semantics of the program must be preserved. And then the JIT might have to eliminate these tests. There is much explanation about it in this paper on the dynamic elimination of, overf of uh, overflow tests in a trace compiler that was published in Compiler Construction. 
Range analysis also helps to improve branch prediction. If we know the ranges of the variables used in the conditionals, it might be easier to guess their values statically. This kind of branch prediction can be used to create static profilers, that is, that is uh, estimates of the probabilities that each edge of the CFG is executed. Range analysis is also useful in register allocation because some architectures have integer registers split into sub-registers, like the x86, for instance. We can combine two registers of 8 bits into one register of 16 bits. If we know that a variable is small enough to fit into 8 bits, we can have two instead of one register to use. Range analysis is also very important for high-level synthesis. The problem in this case is how to convert a program, often written in C, to an FPGA. And if we know the size of the variables, we can save the bits used to represent these variables. The design of range analysis is not very trivial. If we are not careful, we can end up with implementations that are not only imprecise, but also inefficient. Let's explore some of these challenges. Again, can you try to answer these questions before we move on? The questions on the right? There will be answers for them later, but it would be nice if you could think about them. You can stop the video and think about them if you want. One of the main difficulties with range analysis is that the usual representation of ranges comes from a lattice of infinite height. In other words, if we let ranges be represented by pairs of low and high values, then we might end up with a potential infinite chain of intervals in an ordered relation, because integers are infinite. So, the first thing that we need to think about is on the height of the lattice that we use to represent intervals. A lattice of infinite height breaks everything that we have learned about termination. The classic idea to deal with the problem of lattices of infinite heights is due to Cousseau and Cousseau, who in 1977 published a paper about abstract interpretation. This paper is one of the most celebrated papers in the programming language literature. In that paper, they introduced the notion of widening. If the lattice has infinite height, we can do something called widening to ensure that we reach a fixed point when traversing this lattice with monotonic functions. That ensures termination. Widening is like a meet or join operation that gives up precision to ensure termination. So instead of moving up in the lattice by small steps, we apply widening and then go to a value that's so high that it will no longer change, regardless of which transfer function we might apply again on it. This idea of widening is the cornerstone of something called abstract interpretation. Basically, that's a way to interpret the program trying to assign abstract values to variables in a way that it's always guaranteed to terminate. When lattices have finite height, our simple data flow or constraint-based analysis already ensure termination. In face of a lattice of infinite height, then we need to use widening. So, in the next classes, we shall see how to solve range analysis. We will revisit several techniques that we had already seen, and we'll see a few more, namely widening and something called narrowing. Until there, you feel free to drop me an email in case you have questions about what we have seen thus far. Thank you.